Flora Miranda. Miranda is an Austrian fashion designer based in Antwerp. Throughout her work, the main focus is on the human being, one's body, the senses, and perception. Flora explores the physical border experience that takes place in a virtual or actual reality. She spent her formative years growing up in a family of artists and musicians where she developed, she developed skills as a painter. After finishing her studies at the Fashion Academy in Antwerp, she made projects for Iris van Herpen. It's her mission to function as an inspirator and a visionary and to challenge the obsolete notions of haute couture. She demystifies the notions of high fashion. In her recent collection, Deep Web, she is inspired by the American transgender artist Amanda Lepore and, and her in unique body shape. I believe we have her here as well. Um, on stage is one of her dresses of this collection. So this is the the shape of Amanda Lepore. Lepore, I don't know if you know how to pronounce her. Flora is also selected for the first edition of Format, the artist development program of Z33, Z33. Let's invite her to the stage to share her thoughts on this subject. Thank you so much for being here, Flora Miranda. super happy to be here today. Why? Because this topic of um, females as a topic itself, if it's fashion or the whole world, is uh, dear to my heart as I'm one myself. Um, even though uh, it is not an actual topic in my work that I put out there a lot. I'm a fashion designer and, um, and most of the time if I'm invited for talks, I'm talking about um, my, um, my approach to our digital self, about self-tracking and about uh, designing with uh, new digital tools. And um, uh, yeah, but um, within my work, as it's fashion, uh -huh. Yeah, within my work as it's fashion, I do have to, with every little thought, with every little stroke, with every pin that I pin on a garment, think about gender and what I want to express about an individual that I make a dress for. Um, garments is something that we wear on the body, um, and the body is, uh, well, it's a, it's a sexual be a thing, you know, it's uh, like through clothes we, we hide it, we express something about our, yeah, about our sexuality, we, we say who we are, we say, uh, yeah, we give away all our identity and we, we communicate um, about, um, yeah, our state of mind. Uh, so, um, that, that is where I have to decide all the time. Um, the main topic in my work and my most biggest inspiration is the internet. Um, the internet is what I thought to be like America was in the 1960s, the unlimited space of possibilities where yeah, you can, you can, you can, anyone has an equal right to express and build a reality, the reality they want to, to, to be happening and where no one is, is under some power structure, but it's like, yeah, you can, it's, 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 it's a reality we make and as we see also in, in, in many uh, industries like in the music industries or photography, anyone can do a lot with very simple and inexpensive tools. Um, so uh, this, is, this is like the main reason why I love the internet so much. And I also find it super exciting to, to look what happens within this space and what are two people doing with it. 
Um, so, uh, when I was still studying, uh, I did my research, I looked here and there. I do like research, researching on the internet and um, I looked into Second Life. I don't know if anyone still plays that, but back then, that's already quite some years ago. Um, it was still existing and, um, and I was just curious, like, well, what, what would I find in this second reality that people live their dreams where they can finally marry the person they never found in, uh, on Earth and, uh, yeah. So, uh, this is uh, what I found. Um, I was very surprised. Uh, there was absolutely no weird creatures, uh, super imaginative uh, realities. Trees were trees, uh, women were women, and men were men. And super women and super men, as you can see. Uh, well, this is probably quite creative already. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, I found it incredible how over-sexualized everyone was thinking. And, um, and this really stuck with me all these years. I just came back to these images and I was like, why? Like, yeah, what does that mean? Why, why, do, they, why do we do that? And um, uh, yeah, so, um, so now by, as, as my work is, dealing more and more with technology, how we use tools, how we interact with the computer, um, and how we, how we actually live in all these multiple realities that are in the end actually just our lives by now. Uh, I wouldn't say that um, what we post on Instagram is actually a second life anymore. Um, I think to understand that these images or these, these, these avatars that have been there on Second Life is just because the people behind had that sort of mind, state of mind. And um, whatever we do with digital tools, whatever is there out on the internet is how we think, it's how, it's our view on the world. So, um, uh, so that is that is why also with each stitch I do, with each drawing I make, I have to be very careful what I say about gender, about women, about men, and uh, what kind of identity I give people through my designs. And um, design in general is is uh, or anything visual is shaping the the world visually. So there's a lot of responsibility to. Um, yeah, to um, because psychologically we imitate each other. So whatever we show others is something that will be taken further. So, uh, so it's about like, yeah, how do you, how do we think? Are we thinking in, this is a man, this is a woman, and uh, this is what you have to do, this is what you have to do? Uh, or can we say, okay, I am myself and I just am, and I'm, uh, right now I just want to be a little bit like this, and then I want to be a little bit like that, and uh, I have this profession, I ask this sort of paycheck for this sort of amount of hours. No matter what my gender is, I am myself. Uh, so to me, the, the most important thing, thinking about gender and uh, equality, feminism, is that all we can really do is be in charge of ourselves with what we put out there and uh, we have decisions to make any moment, actually. So, you see my, even though I didn't show you any of my work yet, but mainly it is not obviously about gender or it does not obviously talk politically. Um, but even if you, uh, even if, or I'm happy to see that happening, that even if I am consciously putting images of identity out there, that actually it is something people recognize. That's also a reason why I'm here today. 
there, there must be a reason. <laughs> and uh, that is also a reason why um, in my third bachelor, uh, my teacher, Walter van Beirendonk, asked me to uh, make a mural for the Fashion Museum in Antwerp uh, that would talk about gender. And, uh, well, I made a digital painting, completely made in Photoshop, of uh, a landscape where uh, naked bodies, just part of nature, kind of being nature itself, would flow into each other and in the very end, starting with women, then continuing with men, and in the end they would just all swim in the same sea. Um, that's a huge um, painting, 25 meters long. Uh, that's where also, where also to myself was interesting how much um, physicality, how much organic feeling I could reach through a purely digital technique. So that's something that uh, personally always interests me a lot. How can we reach something very, um, yeah, rough physical, something that does not feel cold and coming out of the computer. Um, yeah, another one of just the print. Here's the we female part. Here's a, a selfie or taking pictures. Yeah, kind of like the culture of uh, that sex sells and is, uh, I mean, you have naked bodies everywhere in the media and it's, it's the pictures that work best. Um, so these have for sure been my most sexy works I've ever done. And, uh, and um, for the next part of this presentation, I will simply give you some insight into work I have done, um, starting from my master collection and then going until today, so uh, following the timeline. Um, where you see that my work is not directly about feminism or gender, but that there is always a very conscious decision on, uh, on these topics. Um, so this is my master collection, where it was, uh, well, I imagined um, the possibility of ourselves to be made, or actually, I have to say it like this. Uh, I, I, I thought, I, I read a book about quantum physics, and uh, in quantum physics they can move particles already instantly from one place to the other, so without actual travel time. And, um, and I thought about, okay, so this is just information, and I thought like, okay, the way we send an email, so we type a text, it's information, and it goes from my screen to the other screen, it's like, uh, so I can also just be information, right? Like anything in the world is made of the same matter somehow, so I should be able to send myself and no longer wait for the bus that never arrives and uh, it's all this waiting all the time. Like, I mean, if this works uh, before I die, I, yeah, that would be just great. Um, so I, uh, I, I simply thought about, okay, how can I visualize a body that would be simply made of particles, of atoms, of information, and that would disintegrate um, and then materialize again on a different location. Mm. So this is another outfit. So uh, these pants, for example, have actually been bought by a man, uh, which I found quite interesting. And, um, um, and I also consciously chose for a very, well, I think the aesthetics are quite masculine, like the, like the, the, the choice of color very hard. And, um, and uh, well, like, like uh, on the one hand to kind of create this, this, this very simple optical tools um, of color choice, create an effect of um, uh, like the, a laser light within darkness that would, yeah, beam, <laughs> beam us up. Um, 
and uh, these are some design drawings from then. Um, you can also see that I consciously chose to, um, well, create an elegant and still sexy silhouette, uh, for sure the first picture, if you have like some sort of uh, jumpsuit it can always be sexy, uh, but um, completely deconstructing the expected shapes we would have of a woman. Like, uh, you still have a naked body that is, um, yeah, well, floating upwards into nothingness. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, I find it always very challenging to um, find, find new shapes for the body to be dressed in. Um, here's the dress actually made. Mm. <coughs> This is a dress from my first collection that I did out of school, which I presented in 2016, um, where it was about, well, I was reading a lot about like how complex our society becomes and uh, that some, some parts have to break down and, um, and, uh, and the idea how if everything breaks down, how it could grow again, and um, yeah, again, like uh, yeah, a lot of philosophical things about um, how we're made of, of, of the same matter and could just fluidly form into any kind of new uh, persona or new creature. Um, again, you see like the the, the dress is spiraling around the body and you have a very new physical shape by that. Mm. The same with this coat, even though you don't actually see the shape because it's, uh, because it's open. Um, and uh, this material, by the way, also in the last dress is silicon, which is completely, everything I show you is completely made by hand. This also is silicon, and there is, um, you see these sort of silver buttons where like action, they're like action buttons, like on one is written uh, revolution action, the other one is react, the other one is exit, and the body is sort of like flowing around these buttons, and this is so to say that the, the buttons are shaping the body into a new direction. And that's the idea behind this dress. Mm. Here, this is a dress from uh, my first collection that I presented in Paris during the Couture Week. That was um, in two, January 2018. Mm. This is entirely made of singular ostrich, ostrich feathers that are connected by silicon. It's like, um, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's the most lightweight <coughs> and still architectural material that I could find when I was experimenting with, them, with various fabrics and, um, and, the, and the thought behind this um, was again body related um, like where, where, like what is a garment and we are always dressed by something like we are never naked, we are always within matter, which is invisible matter, it's the air, and um, simply thinking about like what is actually in this invisible matter that we're all the time surrounded of, um, and um, uh, so with this, with this uh, super lightweight architecture, um, yeah, I wanted to create like spaces where like light would seem to flow through. This is another one. This is uh, if it's in if it's moving, it moves very slowly. <coughs> um, this dress is uh, another silicon dress, and here um, we have a material that is also entirely made from scratch totally calculated mm. 
another dress here in a vitrine. And then this is a, a dress from July 2018, uh, where I went to museums to 3D scan dresses. And um, that is because, actually because of one incident that happened, um, like there was there was uh, actually the dress that I sh that you saw before that was first in the drawing and then I showed still the, the, the real dress. Um, it was bought by a museum in Germany and um, so it's part of the museum collection now and then Björk asked to wear the dress. How to get the dress out of the collection? Not. <laughs> So that was uh, also for the museum like uh, a big disappointment because they were like, oh, you know, it would be such a, you know, such a good thing for the dress. But unfortunately, now that it's in the museum, it's in conservative status and it cannot be worn anymore. We have to conserve it uh, and keep it forever. And well, it's true, you know, that's uh, that's great. Um, and uh, but well, I thought about it, and 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 I came up with the funny association of like, well, actually, you know, especially in in Europe, we we conserve a lot, and uh, yeah, it's all about like keeping tradition out of Notre Dame. Of course, we have to rebuild it. I mean, of course, it's Europe, and I also think we have to rebuild it. Um, but also, it's like each museum is a cemetery of like all these dead objects lying there, waiting to be looked at, but it's not moving anymore. Which, um, uh, well, was simply to me, um, I don't even say it's a, it's a bad thing, it's, it's, it's just a poetic image for me, like that these garments are there and um, are in peace, you know, they're cared for. Um, but anyhow, so I thought further and um, uh, and uh, and I came across 3D scanning and I, I thought okay I can I can 3D scan these dresses so they will still be there to be used and find ways to rematerialize them so um, I have my own um, I have my own uh, I have the computer's interpretation of a dress that is not accessible anymore and so the computer is reviving a dress that we can wear again. Um, so I'm just showing you a few of these dresses. Mm. This is entirely made of thermoplastic and it's called the broken wedding dress. This is one of the first times I actually followed some classical silhouette. Um, here you can see the process of the dress. It's being 3D scanned. Then we have the wireframe, and afterwards we may uh, we we recreate it by hand. Um, so <coughs> the video. things that I also don't even have in this presentation built up and I <coughs> come towards artificial intelligence. I have this drive to more and more let the computer be creative uh, and um, um, so I gave basically a keynote as a fashion show where we would explain to the audience, well, sort of a process that I'm right now realizing of um, teaching a computer about fashion and um, I will simply show you a short excerpt from the fashion show. 
Also the reason uh, I did this keynote is because um, I myself have been at the Antwerp Fashion Academy where technology is not existing. And I grew up in a family of artists where technology is not existing. And uh, in my high school neither. And, um, and I always was attracted by this whole field, but if you have no door that opens to you, it's very hard to, to, to get into the knowledge you need to move forward. And, um, and, and now that I'm on a level where I, well, little by little learn about certain tools that I'm uh, immediately loving to use creatively, uh, I thought, okay, well, anyone in the industry that, I don't know, buys, writes, collects, um, has no clue neither. Like, where would they know anything about? So if I bring out my future work, nobody can understand it because how will I explain it to them? So I um, simply wanted to give a few basic terms to the audience and uh, so we can stay on the same page. Let's explore, shall we? Let's get into this together. The <laughs> Our model, our prototype, the form of the fit. <laughs> Here we have an example of a point cloud. What would that look like? Breaking it down, tiny little figments of the garment broken down into a computational data system. Eventually we'll be smarter than others. We'll be on the map. We'll be on the map. when we are essentially dealing with a compressed JPEG of TMI. We haven't taught the machine how to break it down and figure out the difference between, say, a pant leg and a sleeve, an eye and a nose. But we humans need to take this data and to segment it and to break it down into different colors in order to tell the difference. This is a waistline. This is a breast. And this is the derriere. Thank you so much. You are done. Mm. Yeah, so uh, now you wonder, like, okay, what well, was that? And uh, transgender artist Amanda Lepore, like, gender and computer. Well, uh, so, like, in this collection, I took the body of Amanda as the basic shape. Um, because what, um, if you get into the topic of artificial intelligence, you understand that whatever happens out there that kind of looks very mysterious, like we think like, okay, like it's a bit scary, uh, the machines like knowing everything about ourselves and then the companies are using it and so on. It's um, whatever, whatever the computer does is what we give it, what we put inside and what we do with it and it's our mindset that's the computer, like, the computer is definitely nothing more and definitely not yet. If in the future many things change, I can't predict. But, um, so if you think about machine learning and artificial intelligence, these are things that are all based on databases. So the computer learns by you giving him millions of information, all listed up, okay, labeled, this is uh, part of this, label, this is part of this label, and the computer learns by looking at this. So this is like the brain of the computer. So now it's very important what you put into this sort of database because that's what the computer knows. And um, then uh, as we come to men and women, uh, whenever you tap a little bit into the technology industry, you see huh, it's all men. All these nerds, it's all guys, they're like, you know, fair enough, you know, they do great work, uh, but, you know, and that's also one of the reasons I am working and I'm so keen on working with more and more with technology and educating myself is because I see, okay, our 
future is definitely going there. If you look at the 20th century, uh, turn of century 1900, it was industrialization with building machines, you know, and now we have the same happening with, with computers and uh, um, in material part of it. So um, I'm thinking like I'm going where the power is, you know, like I, I feel I have to take charge and I have to bring in a female view, whatever that is. I don't even care to describe it. I just know I am a woman and I have to take charge and be there, you know, because I'm the only one who can decide about myself. And, um, and to actually consciously look at if we create an artificial intelligence for fashion to, well, in the end, the dream is that a computer designs you all kinds of dresses. Uh, well, we will have to decide a lot about is this for men, is this for women, a lot of gender questions. So this is um, what my current research is about. Yeah. Thank you so much, Flora. Um, can I invite the, our other two uh, thinkers, makers on stage? Um, Flora, have a seat. Maybe we can also... Peter, what do you think? Shall we have a look now at Flora? Flora's uh, thoughts. Uh, I have nothing. <laughs> uh, no. So, uh, the multiple choice for computer learning, uh, starting with the dress, the, is it a snake, is it a face, is it a waistline, or is it a derriere? <laughs> uh, I think it's a snake. Um, the lonely fisherman's net, uh, this is the, the wedding net, it reminded me of the, of the web, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so the imprisoned dress, uh, it's uh, sad but good, I think. The buttons for shaping my body, uh, I had dreams like that. Uh, it's my, sh my turn to go to work, okay, yeah. This, it's interesting thing, but uh, I saw a movie once, The Fly. I don't think that interdimensional travel uh, will end well. So, uh, everybody's def defining themselves via the, the internet. I think it's a nice idea. Uh, unfortunately, this is how we think. Uh, the second life, uh, so yeah, so everybody's also shaping their own reality. Uh, that's what we try to do, yeah, and that's it. So thank you. Thank you so much, Freedom. Oh.